Two. Hey guys, welcome back to Life in Newer. Today's topic that I want to talk about is something that I am extremely, extremely passionate about, okay? And that is the evolution of attention. You know, uh, I started off when I got out of the military and I graduated college, I got a job at a call center and we were selling credit repair and, you know, we grew this thing ginormous and uh, it didn't work out for me. You know, uh, I, I left after we built it up pretty big and I built my own little call center. And uh, what happened was, is I actually had a great lead provider that was generating great data for me and the, the lead provider just disappeared. Right, so I went from having like 40 employees, selling like 50 deals or 60 deals a day, doing great volume, and then uh, my lead provider just, you know, gave, just died or, or just fell off the earth, and I didn't know what to do because I had an obsession with just sales at that time. I didn't worry about fulfillment. I outsourced the credit repair to a company that did it for me. And uh, we just really focused on dialing the data, converting the data, and that was really it. But then when I lost my attention, I lost my leads, I lost my interest, I lost the guy that can make the phone ring, I lost my whole business. So that happened about seven years ago. And ever since then, I've had an obsession with attention and conversion, right? And so... I figure out that, you know, my obsession is not only the kidneys, but is also the liver, right, of the body. The product is obviously the heart and the culture and the people is the blood flowing, flowing through the whole entity itself, you know, uh, on it. And so when I talk about attention, right, things and evolution of attention. Now, if you can look at this based on the Richter scale of successful businesses over the last century, over the last hundred years, you have General Electric. Are they still around? Absolutely. Absolutely, they're still around. They were the first ever multi-billion dollar company. Now, what did they sell? They sold light at nighttime they sold electricity but for 40 years all they sold was lights right street lights and all the other things okay so when we're looking at attention and we have attention all over the pace and everything else do we have our attention the same way that the baby boomers had their attention what was popular for the baby boomers right what was really, you know, the targeted arena for baby boomers and attention for baby boomers, right? I'm talking about people who are 60 and 70 years old. When they were in their 30s, so 40 years ago, 50 years ago, what was the best way to accommodate their attention, to be able to convert them and sell a product, right? Well, believe it or not, Coca-Cola, Right, and big companies like that, like Nike at those times, would sponsor billboards on high schools. Okay, they would do mailers, right? They would also do a lot of guerrilla marketing to be able to promote their business, right? Go door to door, have salesmen, introduce the products to the people, give away the products for free, right? They really created the guerrilla marketing mailing conversion process and it worked really extremely well and made companies hundreds of billions of dollars over time, okay? But then we went into the Gen X generation, right? And what was really popular about the Gen X, okay? Gen X, it was all about TV and, and radio ads, right? It was technology was television, right? Not just any television, but then we got into color television, right? And I know for a lot of us millennials and Gen Zs out here, we, we don't even like, what? I've never seen a TV that it's only in black and white, but for your parents and your grandparents could tell you all about TV being only in black and white, not being in 4K or 1080p, and only having a channel where you had your kid get up, right? So your grandfather had to get up from the couch 
and change the channel for, the, for his dad, for your great grandfather, right? And they turn the channel, click, 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 and there's this little rotating button thing that you would turn to be able to do it. And then when the channels didn't go correctly perfectly, they had these big eight foot antennas that came out of the TV and the dad would have the son sit there and hold the antennas in certain positions while he's trying to watch the news, right? You know, the news was really, really, really important back in the day, you know. But then what happened? The number one thing that happens, it always happens with advertisers, is they find something that's working and they find a way to monetize the crap out of it until they ultimately do what? Until they destroy it, right? That is absolutely the life evolution of technology and of advertisers, right? That's exactly what they do. They use it and use it and use it and use it and convert it and convert it and convert it and convert it, and convert it until it, it, it has no effect at all. The CPA, which is the cost per acquisition, goes up too high and it's not worth doing anymore, right? And so we went from TV to radio, you know, into radio ads, right? Well, radio ads are probably number one. Then we went to TV number two, right? We, and then we also had mailers at that time, right? And then we evolved into the Gen X phase, right? And what did we have? We had email and dial-up internet. We had pagers, right? Man, I don't know. I don't. I don't even know. My kid doesn't even know what a pager is. I, I put, looked at paper and pager and, and, uh, on Amazon. People are still selling pagers. It's hilarious. Uh, and um, I asked my son, hey, what is this? He said, it says it's a pager. What the, what, what's a pager, right? My son doesn't know what a pager is, right? And so it's just, it's just funny how we evolve, right? Pagers, when I was 15 years old, which was 20 years ago, was huge was huge. I wanted to have a pager. My little girlfriend, when I got a pager, would write 143143 on the pager, which stands for I, which is one letter, love, which is four letters, and you, which is three letters. So I, 143 means I love you. And so I would get like those little teenage high school 143s, you know, on my pager. It made me feel like I was worth a billion dollars, right? And, and we did all that type of stuff. But, you know, when we got to the evolution of technology, right, it really, really started to evolve in the Internet days, right? Before the Internet came, everybody did everything the same way all the time. Mailers was something new they, they always constantly did radio ads was always was super expensive in there but then also generating door-to-door -door leads was also really really popular it wasn't really it was really hard to communicate on a national level in in these days okay but when the internet came out and the internet started there the internet immediately connected us okay now, people don't think that the internet came around in the Gen X time frame, but it 100% did, okay? You think Jeff Bezos is a millennial? Is Gary Vaynerchuk a millennial? No, these guys are all Gen Xs, okay? All the Frank Kearns, the Tony Robbins, you know, all of these guys are the gen, in the Gen X time frame, okay? They took advantage of the internet when it first came out. They were a little bit older. They were in their 20s. They figured some stuff out, and they saw that this was going to be the next thing, which was the internet, right? Now that we've been able to utilize the internet, what became super popular on the internet was Google, right? How much is Google worth today? Can you tell me? Bex, how much is Google worth today? What is Google's net worth today? Is it like $700 billion? 800 billion, 753 billion dollars. Google is worth to, as of today, 753 billion. Let me put this into perspective, okay? The NFL has the Dallas Cowboys worth $5 billion. There's 32 NFL teams. Let's say that they're all worth $5 billion and they're not. I think the Buffalo Bills is like a little bit worth more than a billion, right? But we have about $170 billion 
is what the NFL teams are all worth. And Google could buy them all and still be worth over $600 billion. Okay? So that just puts you into perspective. They, they could buy the Dallas Cowboys over 130 times over. Now, if you could buy the Dallas Cowboys 130 times, would you, would you make an offer to potentially buy them? No. Google doesn't make an offer to buy them. Why? Because the attention is dying in that arena. 150% is dying. Okay? How much is Facebook worth? What's Facebook's net worth? $600 billion, $680 billion. Six what? Fifty five billion. Six hundred and fifty five billion. Six hundred and fifty five billion dollars, give or take a B here or a B there. Right? So that means that Mark Zuckerberg could buy the Dallas Cowboys about a hundred and twenty times without really, you know, affecting him, right? I'm just going through and telling you about the evolution of attention, okay? Things like these Major League Baseball teams, things like these, these basketball teams, things like these football teams, the attention is dying in these platforms, right? And is evolving. As TV has died out and as radio ads are dying out, as mailer ads are dying out, as email ads are dying out, right? The world of attention is all about evolution, right? And now we have to even think beyond your zip code, on beyond your territory, beyond your state, beyond your country. We have to now be able to think on a worldwide attention arena that's really what we're focusing on now is worldwide attention and so if you're thinking that attention and and mailers is good for your business and you might be making money on mailers and i actually believe that once these different platforms die that when another generation comes back in that it might actually rejuvenate itself a little bit have you ever seen clothes go out of style and then 15 years later or 10 years later, it starts coming back into style, right? They, they, the designer tries to do a little twist on it and make something come back or whatever. It happens all the time, right? And so when we're looking at the evolution of attention, when mailers became very popular, was there a science behind mailers? Can I just send out a regular mailer and just send it to you? and hope to get a conversion? Or was there a science? Was there an offer? Was there value added? Was there a story in that mailer, right? Was there something can, you know, that gave me conviction enough to be able to wanna to call you on my phone, which is another pillar of technology, on the dial-up phone with the 40-foot cord? Remember the 40-foot cord, right? Dude, when I was younger, I think I was like 14 years old, I would call somebody and then grab the cord 20 feet to my room and close the door. And I can't tell you how many times it took me forever to unknot the cord as I'm walking to my room, right? Like that was like, <laughs> that was like this stuff. And my kids have never seen a corded phone either, you know, which is absolutely hilarious, right? My son's age, he's the Gen Z's, if you don't know, right? Kids that are like 15, 16, 17 years old to 12 years old, uh, you know, those guys are the Gen Z's. They've never grew up with, you know, the black and white TV. They never grew up with the bad antennas. They never grew up with the, the phone, the, the cord phones, right? They never grew up with the, uh, you know, any of that stuff, okay? They never grew up with the pagers, you know, uh, on those things. So when we're focusing on attention, right? There's a process, it's called the fundamentals of attention, right? There's two types of attention. There's convertible attention, right? Where you're trying to get an ROI, a return on your investment, right? You're trying to give an offer that makes sense to be able to do it. What's the second thing? Branding, right? 
You know, branding is very, very important when you're going through this stuff, right? But let's go back to the evolution, right? Gen X has got internet. Jeff Bezos was one of the guys who took advantage of that. Mark Zuckerberg's one of the guys who took, took advantage of that. Mark Zuckerberg's only a couple years older than me, you know? Uh, and there's about a dozen other big guys, Google, Yahoo, Bing, right? Uh, you know, uh, Steve Jobs took advantage of technology, right? Uh, you know, um, <clears throat> Microsoft took advantage of Bill Gates, you know, took advantage of, of technology, right? There's tons and tons and tons of guys in the Gen X range that took advantage of technology when they saw it because they saw that this was most likely going to be the leader in attention today, in that day and age, right? And then... We now have multiplied it into leveraging social media, right? How much is social media suck up attention? How much is Instagram worth? I know Instagram is worth something separate than Facebook, but even though Facebook owns Instagram. Instagram is worth $100 billion. That means that Mark Zuckerberg is worth three quarters of a trillion dollars, right? Jeff Bezos and his company are worth over a trillion, right? Apple is worth over a trillion. All of these companies are all designed and focused on two things. One, to make your life a lot easier and connected to the world. And number two, to get your attention, to be able to, to acquire your attention, right? And the reason I'm bringing it up attention is because in today's society, let's bring it up now. We're in the millennial age era, right? The average millennial, right? 79 million millennials in the United States today. And more than 90% of them in the workforce. Average millennial today, 28 and a half years old. Average age of millennial today. I'm a millennial, I'm 34, right? Uh, and, you know, in my generation, I'm in that mixture between, you know, technology and not. I learned how to do great verbal communication, but also learned how to love technology. Now, I never really got big into gaming or anything like that because I was a football, I was an athlete. I was always told gaming is a waste of time and this, this, and this, and crazy, crazy. And come to find out where my parents right, is gaming a waste of time? No, it's not. There was a kid, how old was the kid, 13? 16 years old, and he made $3 million in a tournament playing, get this, golf. No, he was playing a video game. What video game was he playing? A shooter game? Huh? Fortnite. He was playing a game called Fortnite. Now, could you imagine your kid is a sophomore in high school and he just made more money than you have made your entire life playing something that you have told and been told your entire life is a waste of time. It's going to rot your brain. It's going to destroy your mind. It's going to end the world. You're dumber than you've ever been before, right? And I think that's hilarious when we talk about like millennials are, are less educated than Gen X's and Gen Z's are going to be even far less educated than millennial or whatever. I just think that that is a crock of baloney, right? And let me tell you why. Just because you grew up in a baby boomer philosophy and in the German philosophy of education, which is where the United States adopted their education methodology back in the 1930s was from Germany, right? Where they make you sit in a classroom for six or seven hours a day. They drill facts on you or facts they want you to believe, right? And they want you to memorize them. And if you can memorize them effectively, you got good grades. And if you couldn't, you didn't get good grades, right? That is, that is what we call a creativity killer, right? It basically drains the creativity out of a kid's body. That's why I absolutely hate public and traditional education. One of my life dreams and one of my bucket lists is actually I want to create a school 
that is designed specifically for kids to evolve into stuff that they actually have an interest in, right? Now, if you don't think that there's not going to be 10, 20, 30,000 kids that become millionaires over the next 100 years in gaming, you're crazy. It's going to happen. Right. And so when we're looking at these different levels and these different platforms of attention, they're all just basically SaaS companies that suck up your attention. They're software platforms you can utilize and spend time on. Right. Why don't you spend time on Petco's website? How come you don't look at that for five hours a day? Why? Why, why don't you look at, you know, uh, you know, I mean, people go on ESPN, right? The average person's on the ESPN website for, you know, 20 minutes a day or on their app for whatever, right? Why aren't they on there longer? Because they're not allowing people to be connected. They're not allowing their fans, like the Dallas Cowboy fans that are in San Francisco, to have conversations with the Dallas Cowboy fans uh, in Dallas, Right? They're not connected. You know, I can't spend time and talk about how good or how bad these trades are because they're not connected. So NFL, if you're listening to me now, right, grab your app. I'm gonna give you your next few billion dollars. Congratulations. I'm here to do it for you for free. If you can set up a platform where fans can debate each other in like a civilized manner, like social media, right? Where the, the LA Charger fans can also talk to the New York Giant fans, right? And then the New York Giant fans can also talk to other New York Giant fans inside the United States and outside the United States. Guess what? You might be around a little bit longer. Because my prediction is right now, based on your geometric of attention, that you've been able to steal from baby boomers and steal from Gen Xs and everything else, that is only declining dramatically with internet, not taking advantage of it. Because you keep doing the same thing over and over again, putting players on pedestals and not fans. And the reason why gaming is taking off is because they are doing the one thing you're not doing. They're letting fans interact with their professionals. They're letting fans play with high level people. And no one can play with your high level athletes. You're not putting them on a platform to be able to communicate and build that, you know, uh, the village. Right, you're not building that community of of you know of people where we can be connected. What is the purpose of the internet? There's only one major purpose of the internet, and that was to connect the world. That's the only reason, right? Now, what has the NBA done to connect us? Right? You know, Jared, you're an LA Clipper fan for how long? Since I've known you, but longer than that, I'm sure, right? How many L.A. Clipper fans do you know in Florida? How many L.A. Clipper fans do you know in Texas? How about, let me ask you this, how many L.A. Clipper fans do you know in Canada? Right? What if you met some great people that just enjoyed your debate and enjoyed your topics of talking about the L.A. Clippers so much that the L.A. Clippers are going to Florida and these guys want to pay for you to come to Florida and watch the L.A. Clippers with them. Right? Would that happen? A hundred thousand percent. That would happen. If these major league teams, if the NFL, if the major league baseball, if, if basketball created these platforms for fan-based communication, right? There's two types of fan-based communication that are both great for stealing attention. Haters and raving fans, right? People that like you will never buy a ticket and go to an event. They'll never buy season tickets if they like your team. But they will come and watch your team play if they hate your team. 
and they will buy season tickets if they love your team. If they think you're good, they're just going to watch you on TV. If they're financially not there, they're going to watch you on TV, but wish they were there watching. They're going to wish, right? Now, if you put them on a platform to be able to be connected, right, and then also grab that attention and sold your ESPN connected, you know, platform app fee, right? And then on there, you could also sell jerseys and sign jerseys and raise money for nonprofits. And LeBron James could have three signed jerseys. And inside this app, in this app alone, he is raising money and all the proceeds from this jersey go to help these kids with cancer, right? How many people in China would bid for LeBron James's jersey? How many people in Pakistan or the Philippines or Mexico or United States would buy LeBron James's jersey on this ESPN platform if they created it? But because they don't see it, because they want, and they, they're, 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 I, dude, I'm telling you, these guys are just like Kodak. They think like Kodak. What happened to Kodak? Do you even know what Kodak is? My, I'm looking at my, my assistant there. I'm like, do you even know who Kodak is, right? So Kodak, for 50 years, was the conglomerate of the picture, okay? They are, the, you remember like these little disposable cameras? Right, Kodak created these, right? They're a genius, okay? When the digital camera technology came out, okay? It was this giant box, it was this huge thing, and it took a super ugly pixelated picture, right? It was phase one, phase one of the digital camera, right? And Kodak had an opportunity to buy the patent and the technology of of the digital camera. And the CEO of Kodak said, and I quote, I'm quoting this dude right now, okay? We're not in the picture business. We are in the printing business. People like the experience of getting their pictures developed more than they like taking pictures. That single one decision right there, one decision of a chief executive officer of a multi-billion dollar company from the 80s, the 70s, the 60s, and into the 90s, and never made it into the 2000s, one decision completely took them out of business in 18 months. In 18 months, they filed bankruptcy. In 18 months. That one single decision, because this person couldn't see beyond themselves, spending $200,000 on this patent of the digital camera that would have put Kodak on the map even today, in today's realm, doesn't even exist. 18 months later, from the day that this guy said, no, we're not buying this technology. Okay? And I'm telling you, major league sports teams, if you don't start setting up uh, fan base connections for your fan base, you're going to de be demonetized by the gaming industry 10 times faster. Right? How many live chats are going on right now in the gaming community worldwide? How many? Hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands, right? So I'm just letting you know, I'm marking my words now. I'm only putting it on the map now so that I can Gary V you guys 10 years later and say, listen, I told you this was going to happen. It happened. You know, Bex over there, my assistant is looking and smiling. She can foresee it already happening. Jared's over there smiling. He has a grin on his face because he can foresee it happening, right? But I'm telling you, if you want to live five or 10 years longer or maybe even 20, 30 years longer, you need to connect us. Jarrett needs to be connected with L.A. Clipper fans from Florida. L.A. Clipper fans from L.A. He needs to be connected with L.A. Clipper fans here in Utah. He needs to be connected with L.A. Clipper fans in Canada. If he does not become connected and he's only left to his own devices to be connected and only can see what's going on with the L.A. Clippers from TV, 
and from your little app and from your commercials and from you know everything else that he has to spend all this extra time to be able to find to be connected guess what's going to happen you are not going to get one fan in the gen z community the gen z community is going to destroy you it's going to destroy you and it's not going to happen if you think my son is going to waste time looking on six different apps and has no idea what major league sports teams to, to go and play for and he can't be connected with people to get outside opinions in other states the way he can on Facebook, the way he can on Instagram, the way he can on the gaming apps and the way he can connect with everybody worldwide. If he can't do that on your platform, he won't do it. He won't. I'm giving you a billion dollar connection idea. It's crazy, right? Why would Jared have an interest in sort of liking the LA Clippers and being able to correspond with people who are selling LA Clipper memorabilia in, 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 in the app, right? Why, would, why wouldn't he want to debate with people during the LA Clipper game, right? And, and be able to debate with people like, oh, yes, right in your face. Oh, God, that was a perfect three, right? Yes, Jarrett would be one of those trolls on that app throwing every bucket, every dunk, every foul shot, every three-pointer on that app. You would see him all over. Why? Because the guy lives on his phone. Why does he live on his phone? Because he's a freaking millennial. That's what we do. Right? That's how we do. Do you think it's going to get any worse? You think it's, oh, people are going to go back to getting mailers. People are going to go back to TV commercials and watching them. People are going to go back to radio ads and listening to them. You know, it's not going to happen. You either evolve where the attention is evolving and the way attention is evolving, or you die, Kodak, or you die, Barge and Noble, or you die, Toys R Us. Or you die, Circuit City, right? Do you want me to keep going? Over the next three years, 900 million square feet of retail space is going to die. Why? Because the attention is going to buying products online with Amazon. Amazon, great job. I want to see how you evolve over the next two decades. Um... I, I don't know if you're going to be around over the next two decades with the way everything is evolving and the proof of concepts that you're creating on these platforms. I have no idea. I don't think the NFL will be around in two decades because I don't think there will be one baby boomer around in two decades. There won't be, right? The Gen Zs will become the baby boomers. Right, I mean, I mean the uh, the Gen Xs, not the Gen Zs. The Gen Xs will become baby boomers and be in their sixties and seventies at that time, and the millennials are gonna get more into gaming than ever. And I think the only season, you, dude, picture this, okay? Picture this, and I, I want you to picture this, Jared, because this is gonna happen, right? The Los Angeles Chargers is going to change their name from the Los Angeles Chargers to the Halo, or the LA Halo Chargers, or something like that, right? Or, or whatever, right? They're going to sponsor the best gamers, and they're going to sell out tickets. And the gamers are going to all be all LA fans for this platform, for Madden, for whatever it is, right, whatever. And they're going to be playing all the gamers in New York, right? And they're going to be called the New Yorker whatever, okay? And they're going to be gamers. And everything's going to have a monitor in front of you and then a big screen TV right there on the screen. And you're going to have 90,000 fans, Watching these 6, 12, 18, 24 gamers, these seven teams representing New York City for millions of dollars. And you're going to have stadiums of people who are representing New York City, but for the gaming tags rather than the NFL, rather than the Clippers, rather than all the other stuff. That's what's going to happen if these platforms like NFL, 
NBA, Major League Baseball, if they don't evolve and find ways to connect their fan base in ways in which Facebook is connecting Gen Z or the old Gen X's and baby millennials, and then Instagram is connecting and Snapchat is connecting Gen Z's, if they don't find ways to utilize that technology to their own advantage, buy Kodak. That's exactly what's going to happen to you. Do you? I mean, like, dude, Blockbuster was a multi-billion-dollar company. You remember Blockbuster? How many Blockbusters did you see, dude? They were like McDonald's. They were they were everywhere, everywhere, and they had an opportunity to buy out who? Netflix. They had an opportunity to buy Netflix for like twenty million dollars, twenty-five million dollars, something like that. And Blockbuster's CEO had a Kodak moment. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's that's priceless right there. You know, had a Kodak moment and, and and said that people enjoy walking into a Blockbuster because they might quote unquote run into their neighbor. That's what he said, quote unquote. He might people enjoy coming in and buying some candy and renting a movie because they might run into their neighbor. People enjoy that process more than they'll never live stream in their underwear while warming up two hot pockets for four minutes and just streaming all day in their underwear in their room in their dorm. That, that won't happen. People love to get dressed, drive their car in the winter, and, and go through a blizzard and go to a blockbuster because they might run into their neighbor. That's what they said. So I'm, I'm pleading with the major league sports teams to bring somebody like myself in as a consultant or be able to help wake up. Because if you have a general manager who's 65 years old, I guarantee you, he, in his mind, TV commercials are still valuable. In his mind, mailers are still valuable. In his mind, radio ads are still valuable. In his mind, guerrilla marketing is still more valuable than sponsored ads on social media. Right? I, I promise you, ask him. Ask them, major league teams, ask them, right? And don't have a Kodak moment like Blockbuster, like Toys R Us, and most importantly, like Kodak. It's so easy in this world that if you don't have us connected, that will stop coming. So this is the world of attention. Attention's now on Snapchat. Attention's now in gaming. Attention's now in, in connecting us worldwide. Commodity brains. That's where it is. So Nike, I'm going to knock on your door here pretty soon. I'm going to have a gamer athlete. Yes, I said it. I'm even going to predict that if gaming takes as much fold as, as what it's saying and it outdoes soccer over the next five years, which it's going to worldwide, guess what we're going to have? Gamer Olympics. We're going to have the World Cup of Gamers. Mark my words. And these gamers, and then the Olympics are going to try and do it to where the athletes don't make nothing on the attention. Right. That's how. OK. So everyone look at the Olympics. Right. Let's just go through how difficult, first of all, it is to be an Olympic athlete. OK. To be an Olympic athlete, you have to not only be the best in your city, you have to not only be the best in your state, you have to not only be the best in your country. Right. Or one of the top five in your country, if not the best. Right. You then have to pass all these trials because there's only so many spots for you to have an Olympic spot. And based on how big your country is, determines on how many spots you have, right? And so in the United States, we only have so many spots. China only has so many spots, right? J you know, Jamaica only has so many spots. And then... You have the fastest, let's just go over the runner, the 100-meter dash. Let's do the 100-meter dash, right? 
you're the fastest kid in your school. You're the fastest kid in your county. You discipline yourself and you finally become the fastest kid in your state. How much attention do you have? A buttload, right? But then you try really hard and you become the fastest kid in your country, right? You're the fastest kid in America. Do you have attention? You can't make any money. You can't make any money at all. Can't get any endorsements. You can't do anything at all. This is how Olympics work. You can't make any money right now, right? If you get one endorsement, you're, you're out 100%. It don't matter how good you are, okay? You go to the Olympics. You win the first race. You win the second race. You win the third race. How much attention do you have now globally? Billions of people have watched you, right? Now you're in the final race. These are the top 10 fastest humans in the world. Top 10 fastest humans in the world. You take fourth place. You are the fourth fastest human in the world. What does the first place get? A gold medal, like Usain Bolt, right? He got a gold medal. How much money did he get in endorsements for Nike? Nine figures, right? How much money did he get in commercials? Nine figures. How much money did he get over here, over here? Like literally, brands were throwing money at him like it was going out of style. If he would have been a little bit more outspoken, he could have doubled or tripled his money, right? But he made good money. He was happy, right? What did second place get? Who's second place? That's the number thing I want to ask you. Who is second place? So Usain Bolt won first. Who's second? Oh, you don't know? You don't know who the second fastest human is in the damn world. How about third place? What did second place get at least? They got some endorsements, right? They got a silver medal. They call them a medalist, right? You're either a gold medalist or just a medalist. There's no silver medalist. Nobody cares that you're silver. In your second place, you're the first one to what? Lose, right? That's how society looks at you. But then you're in the third place, and you're still a medalist, right? What does fourth place get? Fourth place doesn't get anything at all. At all, right? You just say that I went to the Olympics. That's all it gets, right? And then how much money do you get in endorsements? None. Who, who, who know? Nobody knows. It was like very minimal, right? And so let's go through this now. You're the fastest kid in your county and you're on social media. You get hella likes, right? You're the fastest kid in your state. You get news attention and all this other stuff. Can you monetize it? No. If you want to go to the Olympics, you can't monetize it. If you're the fastest kid in your country. Can you monetize it? You got all this attention. Can you monetize it? No. Do you think the Olympics is going to be around when gaming becomes the number one platform around and you have a 14-year-old kid who is the best, you know, gun action shooter in the world and you're going to tell him that he can't make any money off of his attention? Do you think he's going to understand that? It's not going to happen. But I'm telling you, that's, what's, I mean, that's where it is. You have to evolve. If you're not going to let your college athletes make any money, then you're going to lose, NFL. You're going to lose. There is less, there's more kids than ever who are not playing, you know, contact sports than ever. Right? So you're not letting us play the sports and you're not letting us as fans be connected as much as social media is allowing us to be connected. So I'm ending on this saying, don't have a Kodak moment. And demonetize yourself. Stop demonetizing yourself and leverage attention the way it needs to be leveraged in the 21st century. If you're not going to do it, me and Jared will. Sorry. It's going to happen. Anyway, so this topic, what I was talking about, was called the demonetization and the evolution of attention. Please understand that if you're not looking for the next form of traffic for your business, then you're not taking advantage of one of the big six pillars of leverage. And if you're not looking at one of the six big pillars of leverage, then don't get mad when you have to work for the rest of your life.
Don't get mad when you don't have a legacy to pass on to the next generation. Don't get mad when the next legacy, the next generation doesn't want to inherit your out of date, demonetized business because you won't listen to them in terms of how attention is being attracted in today's society. Today's topic was attention. Learn and study attention to master leverage and to live free. Attention is one of the biggest pillars because without attention, you have no customers. With small attention, you have small customer base. With large attention, you have a large customer base. The more people that know your product exists, the more clients you have. If you're a commodity like Nike, if you're a commodity like Reebok, and you're not trying to utilize the attention barriers where the next generation is putting their attention, then you're only demonetizing yourself. So what are you doing as an entrepreneur? Where are you putting your attention? How are you monetizing your attention now? Where is it going? I'm wrapping it up, people. I got to get out of here. That was today's thing was attention. I want you to focus on mastering leverage and living free. That's literally my life's obsession is to make sure that the next 15 years of my generation understand how to question the six pillars of leverage, how to be able to utilize it in a productive manner, and how to master leverage and live free by asking the questions. Where is the attention going? How can I get there? How can I relate to the next group? 20 year olds don't relate with 25 year olds. Men don't relate with women. It just doesn't happen. I don't have the same values and views as somebody 10 years older than I do or 20 years older than I do. Don't use the male or mentality to market to me. Thank you. And remember to master leverage and live free. Peace.